Yeah. How much longer am I going to feel like this? I wish I didn't have to go to work today. Well, don't tell me you're going to. Well, it's just another code. Ooh. I've sure had bad luck this year. Your luck's good enough. One, it's two, your judgment. One, it's bad. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. You know, Ooh. you keep wearing yourself down until you're ready to catch the first cold that blows your way. How about that square dance last Saturday? Lines, music, you were the life of the party. Swell, nothing the matter with that. But then what did you do? If I told you once, I told you a dozen times, don't sit in a draft when you're overheated. Where was your common sense? Did you know when to go home? <laughs> no, sir, not you. You danced on and on until you were tired out. And then you danced on and on and on until you were completely exhausted. To build up your resistance, you needed a good night's sleep, which you didn't get. You needed a well-balanced breakfast, which you didn't eat, and some relaxing recreation, which you overdid. You didn't even have enough sense to come in out of the rain. Of course, getting so tired didn't exactly sweeten your disposition any. And every time you got emotionally upset, man, you knocked your resistance down another peg. Your resistance was all burned up. You were a pushover for the first germ that came along. And they came along, all right. People are sure inconsiderate. Well, look who's talking. When you first felt this cold coming on, were you considerate? <laughs> the indispensable man. <laughs> but I have to get to the office <coughs> the last few days. I haven't been able to get a thing done. Oh, you're just being modest. You've done plenty. First, you gave your cold to your family. At the office, you passed it on to five other people. And each of them took your cold home to their families. Your wife passed around the infection to three of her friends at the bridge lunch. And they spread it to their families. And Junior, he's young, but he gets around. He managed to plant the virus with half a dozen second graders. If this keeps up, it might spread all over town. <laughs> Tolls are sure contagious, <coughs> but don't worry. I won't sneeze near anybody at the office today. Near? <laughs> near, he says. Why, don't you know that even when you talk, Clouds of infected droplets spray out into the air. Coughing spreads them farther. <coughs> Sneezing scatters them all over the place. <coughs> They're an invisible menace, just waiting to be inhaled by other people. It's just common sense. It's just common... Common. Just common sense to always trap your coughs and sneezes with a disposable tissue. Hey, don't blow your ears out. You should leave both nostrils and your mouth open. And blow gently. If you close off one nostril and blow hard, you might force the infection back up into your ears and cause some real damage. 
Ah, uh-uh. don't put a cold in your pocket. Dispose of your tissues where they won't infect other people. Of course, you can't dispose of your hands, and anything they touch also becomes a germ carrier. So, well, look, it's as simple as A, B, C. A, girl has a cold. How does she share it with B, boy? And C, child? She divides candy with boy and adds toy to child. Result, three colds. Now look at the number of things you've touched in this room. The phone, dishes, the bedding, your clothes, all contaminated. You know, those germs can infect someone days or even weeks later. There's a very simple solution. A solution of ordinary soap and water. Germs can't stand being washed. And fresh air and sunshine are usually fatal. Colds are sure a nuisance. Oh, well, what can be cured must be endured. Well, if that isn't the silliest... Hey! Don't tell me you're still going to work today. Why not? Everybody knows a cold has to run its course. If it's a cold, it might be the first symptoms of measles or whooping cough or something much more serious. And even a simple cold can get very complicated. So, well, look. Figure it like a battle between two football teams. The goal line we're defending is you. This is your line of resistance. Now, here's the attacking line. The common cold with a powerful backfield of dangerous invaders. Influenza, laryngitis, bronchitis, and pneumonia. If you keep your line of resistance strong, you can fight them off. But you can't hold a powerful team like this with a weakened line like you know whose. Once a cold opens a hole in your line, anything can happen. It's anybody's game, folks. Any one of the invaders may find a weak spot and break through. And here they go. It looks from here like an infected sinus. Now it's a nose and run and into the ear zone. Oh, they're really rolling now, folks. It's laryngitis or strep throat for another lie down. Now it's bronchitis or is it pneumonia? Hooray! Hey, pneumonia? That's enough. That's enough. What'll I do? I'll tell you what you do. You crawl back under those bedclothes where you should have gone when this cold first closed in. If the cold hangs on, let your doctor have a look at you. But a day or so in bed may save you several days later on. In the meantime, you might as well enjoy your misery and comfort. There's nothing like a good rest to rebuild your resistance. And it keeps you from spreading your germs to a lot of innocent people. Makes sense. Sure it does. Common sense.